All right, welcome to another episode of Class Haven Farms. So what do we got going on today? Well, I'm ready to take you guys in where the chickens are. Got some pretty exciting news. So Ethel has gone broody. She's been going broody for about two weeks now. So, show you guys here how she's acting, how you know she's going a little broody. There she is, old Ethel Lou. What are you doing, Ethel? Eth? We're gonna see if we can't hatch some eggs with Ethel. So here's Ethel. She's our buff Orpington. I uh, got Ethel. She was one of the uh, baby chicks we got from Meyer Hatchery back last April. So Ethel, for the last two weeks, has been going broody. This is how you know when your hens are going broody. Uh, Ethel loves me and will always let me pick her up and do stuff. But watch what Ethel does when I start messing with her. She's probably going to peck at me. Starts bluffing herself up. It's okay, yes. So, what we're going to do is, uh, I have a buddy who has a larger scale chicken farm. And uh, I put out my feelers to, to all my friends and was like, hey, has anybody got any fertilized eggs? I don't have any. I don't have a rooster. And uh, my buddy contacted me back. So, he's going to bring me uh, six eggs. And we're going to put them in there with Ethel. And I'm going to show you guys uh, how to do this. Now, I've never done this personally. Um, I just know from my, uh, from my grandparents' dairy farm and just some of the stuff that I just know from messing with chickens and being curious and watching videos from other YouTube channels. So uh, we're going to try it out. The problem is uh, I got a brooder box that I was not ready for because I placed an order for our baby chicks and they're not set to come in until August. So uh, I'm going to show you guys kind of how I'm going to set this up and show you how much I am unprepared for this. So here we are in what I call my brooder shed. Um, so typically, I set my brooder up here. Uh, you can see I got a hook here that I'll use to hang my light and stuff, but that's my homemade brooder box right there. So uh, I have a lot of picking up and moving around that I need to do. Like I said, I was not prepared for this, but you know what? I got two little kids, and there's no better way for them to get an experience of life by watching it happen firsthand. So I'm very blessed to be able to, to provide that for them. I'm also very lucky that my buddy had contacted me and said, hey, I got some uh, fertilized eggs because um, I was just trying to find somebody local. So let me get this place cleaned up, set everything up, and then I'll run you guys through um, my game plan on this at least. All right, so here we are. Of course, you can see it's dark out now. So here's my brooder box. Now, I put this bucket here uh, because I don't have a box right now that's tall enough. I don't think I'm going to use that bucket, though, um, because Ethel is already big uh, if she wasn't going broody. Um, so I don't think that that's going to work too well. But I definitely want to try to put something in here that has some sides to it, at least until after the, the, babies, uh, the baby chicks hatch. And then I'll just leave the uh, straw there and let them sit in there. But this is my game plan, kind of set it up in here. Now I have, if anyone has ever watched any of my other videos, I have that uh, cheaper tractor supply uh, chicken coop that I thought about, well, I'll just use that as my brooder. But the problem with that is it's a really, really small area and I don't want them going down the steps, at least the baby chicks, because if, you know, a couple of days old, they're real fragile. So if one of them falls or something like that, they're going to be dead. So I thought maybe I could set them up in here. I mean, most of the time when I, when I brood my chicks in here, it's, uh, it's three weeks and then I move them out into that little coop. So, um, so we'll see how it goes again, guys, I've never done this before. Now my game plan, <clears throat> I'm supposed to get the eggs, uh, tomorrow and I'll bring them home. I'm going to mark them just so I know what eggs are fertile. 
and I'm going to put them in with Ethel and see if she takes to him. And if I'm just going to set them around her and see if she grabs them and then pulls them bucket up in their clutch. If she does that, then that's that's a good sign. She'll take the eggs. I think she will because she's sitting on all the other girls' eggs. She's just like, she just minute she gets up, somebody lays, she comes right back down and plops right down. So I think she will. So when she does that, as long as she takes those eggs, at nighttime, just like we have right now, that's when I'm going to make the swap. Uh, if you guys know, chickens are a lot more docile to deal with at night. So I think that'll be less stressful just to do it then. So I'll grab the eggs. I'll put the eggs out here. Obviously, I will change this out because I don't like the way this looks. But I'll change this out. Um, put a box in there that I think might be a little better. There's a grocery store that I can slide by and see if they have a better size box uh, tomorrow. And um, I'll move the chicken eggs out here. And then I'll bring Ethel and I'll move her out. Now, this light is not a heat light. It's just a way for me to simulate daylight. And I have it set up on a timer so that when the sun comes up, the light comes on. When the sun goes down, it goes off. Ethel should be able to keep them warm in here. Um, I don't need to put a heat lamp in here. But just for anyone that's curious, it's just a, just one. I mean, it's almost like a brooder light. It's just one of those indoor clamp lights. It just works out really well. Like I said, just try to simulate daylight because I do want them kind of feeling like there is the sun coming up and sun coming down. So anyway, uh, pretty excited. So hopefully the next video I'll do for you guys here will be the uh, getting the eggs and trying it out. Okay, so we have 12 eggs that what I did was I put them around Ethel. I'm trying to be cautious around her because she's upset right now. So we put 12 eggs around her, and what she did was she went ahead and took them and put them and basically clutched them. Uh, so she has 12 eggs under her right now. So for those of you that are watching this and you're like, what is he talking about? A broody chicken. What does that mean? So a broody chicken just means that Ethel knows that right now she needs to act like a mama. Right now, her hormones are telling her that she needs to hatch some eggs, and that's what needs to go on. So she's going broody. So it's almost like if you have a wife that's ever gone through the nesting phase when she's pregnant, well, she's nesting right now. So Ethel, we're going to leave you alone. We're going to shut this door. And then later tonight, we are going to move you out into the brooder box. So again, like I said, when she gets broody, when your chicken gets broody, she's going to fluff herself up. She's going to get really fat. Um, I got two kids here staring at me laughing right now. <laughs> you, got, you, might, you might be able to hear them laughing in the background. But anyway, so she'll get, she'll fluff herself up, she'll lay herself flat, and she is going to put those eggs at the perfect temperature, the exact temperature that we need. It's going to take anywhere from 18 to 21 days from today's date. So we'll keep doing updates on this. But I'll go ahead and shut this off. And then later tonight, I will show you guys the move. And I got two partners here that I think are going to help me do the move tonight. All right. So here we go. We're going to pull these eggs out from Ethel and we're going to move her. What do you want to open your carton up and I'll start pulling them out? All right. So we got the eggs moved. We did lose one. Uh, she must have moved around on it and broke part of it. So actually, I think it might have been Crystal. I think Crystal might have been in there messing with her because we did find a green egg. So this way, this will be safer for her. So now we're going to go get Ethel. All right, buddy. All right. Let me see her. Let me see her. Let me take her from you, okay? It's okay, Ethel. It's okay. It's okay, honey. It's okay. Where's your eggs? Where's your eggs? Where's your eggs? Where's your eggs? Right here, Mama. We'll stay in here with her for a little bit and let her get settled, okay? okay. So it's been about two days. Um, Ethel's doing really well here in the brooder box. Um, if you can look down, you can see her. She's sitting on her eggs. She's rotating her ed eggs, which is a really good sign. That's, that's what you want to see. So I'm very happy with that. So before I end this video, I just want to say a big shout out to my buddy Joey Windsor from Windsor's Game Farm. Um, 
Joey, thanks so much for donating the eggs. We did end up losing one, which you guys saw, but so far we still have 11 and Ethel's doing a really good job. So those of you that are interested in farm fresh poultry and bringing fresh meat home, check out Windsor Game Farm on Facebook and on Instagram. It's Windsor's Poultry. I'm also going to put a link in the description to their website so you can check it out. I uh, was talking to Joey. He just ordered 100 meat chickens, so they'll be coming in shortly, and then he'll start raising them, and he processes all the stuff on his own. So he's definitely going to be somebody that I'm going to go to and talk to a lot because, as you guys know, we're going to start doing our own meat chickens. Our meat chickens are set to come in in August. So i still got some time to build the coop, uh, and I'll put a uh, check out some of my other videos because I talked about some of my plans for that. So without further ado, I just want to say thank you guys very much. Thanks for watching. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.